All right, let's welcome in Old Men of the Three correspondent Tyrese Halliburton. We're going to hit, hit on some uh, topics around the league and do a You Got Mail segment. Tyrese, what's good, my brother? Oh, man. Glad to be back. It, it's been a while. It's been a while. We're glad to have you back on. Tyrese, earlier today it got announced that uh, your coach, Alvin Gentry, uh, is going to be out health and safety protocols. Um, you know, he's, he's the interim coach. Luke, Luke already got fired. Like what's going, what is going through your mind right now, knowing that potentially, and we'll get to a broader sort of conversation about COVID around the league, but just knowing that potentially you could be on your third head coach for an extended period of time, 28 games into the season. Yeah. I mean, man, what can you do? You know, like at the end of the day, we got to go out there and perform. And I hate to come in. Like, obviously when I hop in media, right. They're like, if they ask me that question, like I have to give the answer that's like so redundant, but to me, it's so common sense. Like at us as basketball players, like we have to control what goes on on the floor. Uh, like obviously coaches can dictate when it comes to rotations and things like that. But in terms of like little things like effort things and, and boxing out and, and reads and things, that's, that's on us as basketball players. So like at the end of the day, we just have to go out there and, 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 and perform, um, you know, obviously it's been a rocky year thus far. Um, but you know, it's the season's so young, there's so much to go and we're home for the rest of December. So got to take care of business, man. Does it feel like things are kind of getting away from the league a little bit when it comes to the to the COVID stuff. I mean, the Bulls were sort of the obvious first example, but now, I mean, in Brooklyn last night, they were playing with eight guys, and it feels like, uh, you know, every other team is having an extended breakout at this point. I think, I mean, I don't know, man. It's, it's hard, though, because I think us as, as basketball players, like, JJ, you played last year with the COVID year. Like, like guys want to guys wanna be able to go places. Like, last year, we were really, like, locked in our hotel room it felt like you know what i'm saying like you couldn't really go anywhere um you were locked in hotel room eating rooms you were going to these cities with such great food and eating room service or having a you know uber eats doordash food you know what i'm saying like guys want to be able to live their life go out see their friends and family when they're you know, in the same city or, or whatever the case may be so um it's it's it's, it's hard man because you gotta we gotta get back to our lives but also staying safe at the same time yeah we 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 Obviously, you were not in the bubble, but we were there for for two months, and then the season starts around Christmas, and I believe it was around January 10th where the league enacted a very strict policy, and and the policy basically was don't leave your hotel room, don't leave your apartment. If you need to go to the drugstore to get toothpaste and a toothbrush, have it delivered. Like there was no real wiggle room, and then they eased up and they said well, you can go on a walk for an hour outside as long as like you're not going to a public place. Um, it was a very very difficult year, and and that protocol was put in place day one of a two week West Coast trip for us. So we started that trip with two straight weeks where we could only be in a hotel room. That was super frustrating. JJ we were, was not, Tommy, we were we started the trip in LA. We started JJ, the trip in LA. JJ was not in a good place. Terrence, I've known JJ for a long time. I would say by day seven of that trip, I think you were in Utah or something like that. I, we were doing pods. We had a couple of meetings or whatever for for a, a non you know family issue or you know tragedy or anything like that. I don't think it's hard to get much lower than he was at that particular moment. And we talked about it last year, it, it, whether it was like my first time on the show or, or, you know, a reoccurring appearance. We had me and you, we talked about it. We complained about it on the show. Cause like, it, I don't know how it was for you guys, but for us, we couldn't go to the arena till four o'clock. Like we got to the arena. If I got to the arena at three 30, I want to get shots. No, you had to wait till four. Like I would just be sitting in my car till four o'clock. Like it was, it was so crazy. Um, Tommy, in fairness to your point about, uh, certainly a, a low point for me last season, and I had a few of them. But in fairness, that that trip, that two-week West Coast trip that the Pelicans went on and, and that the NBA uh, first put in this policy, 
That was coming off the holidays as well, which were a very hard time for me last year because it was. I my think sec- you were. I think it you were was my second straight year. You were completely not having justified. Christmas with my family, yeah. not having New Year's with my family. I was in a low. I was a low point. It was a dark point. It was a dark being, point. <laughs> being locked in a hotel room in Salt Lake City on the middle of a two week trip with no family, I think that I. I think everybody listening to the show would back you on on feeling a little bit down for that. Tyree says, as crazy. as the pl- the players, your teammates, your friends around the league. Are you guys talking about this? Do you get a sense that that the league is going to maybe put in uh, stricter protocols going forward to try to get this thing under control? Yeah, I mean, I, I think so, right? Like the bull, it wouldn't shock the bulls, me. It wouldn't yeah, shock it would, me. It wouldn't be surprising. Anymore. I think you're kind of just waiting at this point for it to happen. Um, you know, I, and, and I, it's, it's going to be it's going to be hard, but it's like what we have to do. And I think the hard part now is that if they do make these stricter policies last season, we were going to arenas with nobody there. <laughs> like this year we're going to arenas at full capacity. You know, they're reaching over the thing. They're pretending like they're eating and drinking the whole game. So they don't have to wear a mask. You know what I'm saying? Like it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. And also depending on what state you play in, you know, it's some States COVID isn't real. You know, so it's exactly. just so it's so you're basically at a spot where it's like it doesn't do you any good to be in California and have all these policies if you go to these other places and and you know so I don't envy them. It's not a it's not an easy decision of what to do. Um, before we get to the mailbag, I do I should have done this at the top of of uh, this this conversation. I do want to point out to our YouTube viewers if you could just look over Tyrese's left shoulder to the right of his face. And just kind of, kind of lean in. It's kind of dark back there, but I recognize that jersey, and that is a Redick Mav seventeen jersey. So the I just throwback, the green one, <laughs> the, the green Tyree, one. Tyrese, you know who the other guest on this episode is today, right? They told me that's my boy. They told yeah. me it's my boy. So yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he's man. been he's been begging us to come on for two years. <laughs> a bunch of people canceled, so we finally were like, okay. oh, and I I did want to update you. I did want to update you. He wanted me to tell you that he is disappointed in you as a friend that you didn't show up to the fairway meat market meet and greet that he had in Ames. <laughs> I dropped him off and I picked him up. <laughs> I I was not going, but I did drop him off. Uh, yeah, well, you are a good friend. You are a good friend. All right, Tommy, let's let's get a few of these mailbag questions done. All right, let's do it. Okay, actually, th- we're starting off with a weird one with a, one of our European listeners, Molly from Stockholm. What's a place in the world you've always wanted to visit you've never been able to go? Mm. Mm. I, I want to go to. Um, I actually really want to go to like Santorini, Greece. Like good answer. The pictures, the pictures look beautiful. I think it'd be a good place. That's where I want to go. It's a good choice. A um, lot of places I want to go. Too many to list, to be honest with you. And I haven't traveled a ton since I've I've, I've had kids. So um, I would say right now, for some reason, I've been dying to go to Portugal. I want to go to Portugal. No, we got the we got the first Portuguese drafted player in the NBA on our on our team. You know that. He's two way guy, dude. If I end up going at some point, I need to I need to hit him up about some wrecks. He, he's a god in Portugal. Trust me. All Trust right. me. Terry, do you have a favorite place you've been already that you would recommend outside of the country? I mean, uh, yeah. Between my freshman and sophomore year, I got the opportunity to play with the under nineteen team for USA. We played in Greece, but we didn't. We were on a uh, like a smaller like part of Greece. Like I didn't get to see the majority of it. But then uh, I got to go to Italy like two months later for our foreign trip for college. Um, and my favorite city or my favorite, we went to, uh, Florence, Rome, Florence was my favorite city. So I like, I like Florence. So I would, I would suggest people go there. All right. Tommy, do you have a, do you have an answer to this question? Yeah. I want to go to Vietnam. Dope. All right. Vietnam would be amazing. Yeah. Southeast Asia. Okay. You, Tyrese, you kind of talked about this before, but Lucas and Sacramento, how do the players handle the suddenness of a coaching change? Yeah. I mean, uh, me as a naive, you know, second year player in the NBA, um, you know, I was, I was, uh, like it, it threw me off for sure. Um, cause I have a great relationship with Luke. Um, you know, so it was, it was definitely weird, like a weird transition into where we are now. Uh, but you know, guys who have been in the game for a while, uh, they're like, man, this is not the first time it's going to happen to you. It's not probably not the last it's going to happen to you in the NBA where, you know, a coach gets fired. So some guys have obviously been through it. Um, you know, we got some young guys like 
myself and Davion, who are just now experiencing this, but Fox, this is what his third or fourth coach, you know, since he's came, came to, into the NBA. So, uh, you know, it's a little weird, but we run all the same stuff. And JJ, you know, Alvin's trying to run, get up and go. So it's fun to play with Alvin. Um, you know, Luke was the same way, but Alvin really is always preaching. Let's just run in transition. Let's, let's get some stops so we can get out and run. Uh, so, you know, it, it's fun. How did you find out? That, that Luke had got fired. Uh, I got a call from from our GM uh, okay. shortly before it was announced. Yeah, yeah, that's a good look. I think that's a good look. That's a good look. All right, next question. Um, Jessica and Phoenix, thumbs up or thumbs down on eggnog? <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> down right? It's got to be. I wow. knew both of you would have this horrible take. Oh, here we go. Huh? Is... I, I, okay, here we can go. I be real? I've never tried eggnog. How are you giving a thumbs Somewhere down if you've never tried it? Don't, don't. I've never, don't. I've never tried eggnog. I'm from Wisconsin, so people are going to kill me for that. Um, but I've never had it. So I, I have no take. I will try it, and I will get back to you. But Wait, right don't now. walk it back just because he said it. I've you're never compl- tried it. You're completely that's like that, right. That's like but, you know it's, like vegetables. but you know He's what's in it. it. You know what's in it, right? I have no clue. It just looks gross. So I, I don't drink it. Um. So here's the thing with eggnog that – makes it so special is that eggnog first of all it's it tastes amazing but it's it's a novelty item it's not something you drink year round it's a novelty item that you drink around the holidays you throw a little nutmeg on it maybe some cinnamon if you're into that i don't know some people like to spike their eggnog with rum or whiskey people do that apparently too i just like eggnog with a little bit of nutmeg Christmas Eve, everybody gets to open one present. Maybe you've got a fire going. Like, there's nothing that speaks to me more. It's just there's a nostalgia to that. So it feels and like you're judging this on the sentimentality of your feeling around the holidays. What's not, the first thing I said, Tommy? Not the it taste. tastes amazing. <laughs> if I don't understand how people think eggnog doesn't taste amazing, there is, eggnog JJ, tastes amazing. There's JJ's the guy that you know when they like they they put these holiday ads on. And they get people with like the sat like JJ's the guy that buys shit because of the holiday wrapping. <laughs> I JJ, I'll, I'll I'm gonna try it within the week and I will get back to you. So I, okay, I apologize. Somebody in time. Sacramento send Tyrese some good. Yo, eggnog. what's the what's the famous? Um, it's not gelato and it's not soft serve ice cream. What's the famous Wisconsin? Um, like custard, custard, custard. Do yeah. you like custard? Man, custard, nothing like it. There's nothing. Okay. Like it What's okay. the place? Culver's. So Culver's you, like, the famous place. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, that's our that's a fast food spot. But like, cops in Milwaukee cops, is the cops. That's where I went when I yes, played in Milwaukee. Cops in Milwaukee. Cops is, is fire. Is, but is if you like custard, spot. you would like eggnog. Okay, I'll try. Yeah. I'll try it. Nah. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. yeah. No. No comment. Okay. They're different. They're different. I'm not surprised, dude. You don't like mayo. You're <laughs> a fucking. You're one of those fucking <laughs> weirdos that doesn't like different, mayo. They're different things. But okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Robin from De- Robin from Detroit says. Who's a player on an under the radar team who you think deserves more attention for how they've played? Ooh, that's a great one. Tommy, you just teed one up for me. Josh Hart is having his best season as an NBA player. He's played a bunch of different roles this year. He started, he's come off the bench, they've had injuries, he's played big minutes, he's played uh 15 minutes. He's been so consistent in his minutes this year. He's averaging career highs in points assist um he's obviously an elite rebounder as a wing he's a guy when i think about and again i don't know what happens when zion comes back or when zion comes back but he's a guy that at some point if i'm a contender i go after him he's someone that i see on the court in the fourth quarter of a conference finals or finals game making making winning plays exactly uh, he's the guy to me that jumps and I, look he's a friend but like I wouldn't acknowledge if he was having a shitty season, I wouldn't talk about him. He's having a great season. He's doing he, he's he's doing things that he hasn't done before. His playmaking has been amazing this year. Um, Willie Green, shout out Willie. Willie's just kind of let him play and giving him freedom. I that's a, I, I had to think about this a little bit. Two guys, Grayson Allen has been balling. Yes, um, you know since getting moved from Memphis, he's been balling. Uh, you know from Milwaukee. Shooting, shooting the, the crap out of the ball. Um, and Mikhail, Brid- Mikhail Bridges, that's my guy. We're friends. Okay, so that 
friend of the show, friend of the show, friend of the show, recent let guest. Me, let me. Uh, so this is not this is not just like we played Phoenix. I was out when we played them at home, and he was making some mid range jumpers that I would I, and like making some moves to get into his spots. That I was like, man, like he, he like he's worked on his game, like you can tell, and like it looks like it look he looks really good, and and the way he can defend, and obviously the season he had last year, like to keep adding to his game like that. He's been balling, so that is, I don't yeah. actually. I want to go back to something because you bring this up. I want to go back to something that I talked about on first take a couple weeks ago when Stephen A. tried to uh, say that <laughs> Phoenix's championship window has closed, and I, I think I used the word asinine in response. Have you watched to that. Tyrese? Have you watched JJ and ESPN? By Man, the way? I love it. I'm, I'm <laughs> Wait, always tuned in. I, I did, always tuned I, and, in. And Stephen gave me shit because I talked about him on the pod, and I'm not talking about Stephen. I, this is this is I, we've already talked about. Steven on the pod and I, everybody knows I love him, but I want to talk about Phoenix for a second because to me, DeAndre Ayton, Mikel, and of course, Devin Booker, let's say Chris does at some point not play like Chris Paul, the Chris we all know over the next two or three years of that contract. They're still great. Man. They're still great. Those three guys are young. They get better every year. They're hungry. Like I, lo- the future of that franchise is very bright. Very bright. Tyrese, one thing I have to point out: uh, you technically didn't answer the question because those are Milwaukee and Phoenix were in the finals last year, so it's not under really, the radar. Team. Really an under the radar question. team, but you know what? It's My bad. Are the, are the Cavs <laughs> an under the radar team? No, yes, no. I think so. I think they are. I mean, they're to, one of the best teams compared the to Phoenix part. and Milwaukee. So. <laughs> I, there's a lot of guys talk about the Cavs, but Darius Garland. Darius Garland has been balling, man. Yeah. Like he, like DG has been balling. So yeah. I'm talking okay. DG. Good. My bad. Good answer. My bad. Okay. Um, Timothy from Brooklyn. What's one current move in the NBA that you wish you had? Hmm. Hmm. It's a good question. A move, a move in the NBA. Really, any for me, it was like any move going left. I wish I had a move <laughs> going left. <laughs> Uh, uh, I would say how Mike Conley is so elite with his floater with both hands. That's a good one. If I had the left, it'd be a little because I'm always I'm coming back to the right for the floater like everybody else. But Mike, he's getting the both, so I would say the floater with the left. It's a good one. It's a good one. Tommy can't answer this question. Yeah, I'm, I'm not answering that question. All right, next question. Uh, Jane in Omaha. Oh, I did love this question. Do NBA players listen to pump up music before games? They definitely do. Yeah, guys definitely do. Do um, they? Yeah, I mean, guys definitely have their head. There are definitely some guys that have their headphones in. You know, up until you meet. Uh, but myself. I don't really like. I, don't, I, I have my days, you know, where I put my headphones on, but it's 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 rare. I guess that to translate this question a little bit, why I like this question is it's like there's a theatrics in in sporting events, and this isn't just pro sports; it's like high school, college, whatever. Of like, you know, really intense before the game, da da da, like listening to whatever. Like, or are you just like, oh, we're just gonna go out and play. Yeah, I think just go out and play. Well, I have my headphones in. If I have my headphones in pregame, if you see my headphones in pregame. More than likely, I'm listening to two thousands R and B, so it's not pump up, but it you know it gets me ready. Yeah, I, n- I never really listen to music before games, but a lot of guys definitely do. Um, if you saw headphones in my ears before a game, I was probably listening to uh, NPR. So <laughs> smooth jazz. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not even, not even, not even music. Just NPR. Just like a talk, a talk on NPR. Uh, Stephen in Washington D.C. What's the weirdest thing a fan has ever said to you? Mm-hmm. I gotta think about this. JJ's got a deep JJ's got a deep bag of the Look, of answers. There's this. been a lot of there's been a lot of weird things that have been said to me. Um, certainly, certainly JJ drinks his own pee is up there. Um, the weirdest thing, though, I thought this was strange. Was um, my first year? I think it was my first year in Philly. Uh, towards the end of the first quarter. A fan, clearly a UNC fan, a, a fan said to me that I couldn't shoot, which I thought was very odd, considering at that point in time, I'd played 12 seasons in the NBA. I had graduated at Duke uh, 
He's the all-time leading three-point shooter. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> and I had made, I, I mean, I had made tens of millions of dollars based on the oh, fact that I could really shoot a basketball. So I thought that was a weird thing to say to me. And it, it, it like it. it Surprised little, you didn't it, mention the, the national player of the year. No, I'm just saying it was like a weird <laughs> thing. It's it's like <laughs> it's like. I don't know. It's just it's just that weird. Is a weird it's, it's a weird it's, it's a, a weird like put it's a down. Factually, like, it's a factually shoot. wrong. JJ, yeah. you can't shoot. You can say you a lot shoot. of you can say a lot of nice things, but not a but uh, like yeah. it's a factually inaccurate statement. And then I, I had a great I had a great like r- like running towards the corner at the end of the first quarter, turning the wrong way, and I did a quick release three at the buzzer, and then I turned to him. And I, I can't remember what I said, but I started yelling at him. He was he was on the he was courtside down on the the Hornets end, and I was just yelling at him. And then for the rest of the first half, I just yelled at him every time I made a shot. Yeah, I don't know if I have a real answer for this. I, I like the majority of stuff is like about my shorts because I like my shorts short. So I hear a lot of stuff about my shorts needing bigger shorts. I have an unorthodox jump shot. Uh, so people talk about my shot. Uh, I would say the weird. It was like, I don't remember where we were at, maybe OKC or something. And somebody mentioned like our rival. Somebody was like, you're not playing. And they mentioned like our rival high school. Like, I was like, man, you went on your phone. You went deep. You went on your <laughs> you phone and you looked up my rival high school. And uh, they're like, you're not playing at Oshkosh West anymore. And I was like, that's weird. Yeah, that's that, respect. That, yeah, they, 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 they put in work for that one. So congrats to them. Have you had any – have you had any – um? funny moments with courtside fans like not like not like people heckling you but just like funny stuff no not really i mean no not that i could think of honestly that'll probably come i feel like in due time did you guys when see we, spike did you guys see spike at the game last night yeah we gotta get we gotta get spike on the pod we, we gotta to get, get spike on. On it was pod. hilarious <laughs> um i just thought about i played it uh to tyrese's point of people like going really deep not even like wikipedia page deep but like really deep on it uh my senior year bc joined uh the acc and and that was the one time that i played at boston college it was like an espn game we were first in the country they were is that the game the that tommy drafted no 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 no, oh. no. and then um but anyways the, i was shooting free throws in the second half and their their student section char- started chanting my girlfriend's name which she went to duke and she's from minnesota i was like i'm sure there was a connection there but i'm like that that's weird to me. Like this is prior to social media. So it wasn't like you could look up and, and see like who I was tagging in photos or something. It it was like, you guys did your research respect. By the way, Tyrese, if I was to sit courtside of the game and heckle you, you already know what I would say. I would, I would make fun of the fact that you you don't, I think we're coming to Sacramento three pointers. We're coming to Sac just to do this. We're not actually going to tape an episode or anything. He's just going to, he's just going to talk shit. I'm just going to talk shit about the fact that you, that you jump on your middies, but you don't jump on your threes. All right. Make it happen. Jason in Atlanta. What's a good Christmas gift that people wouldn't normally expect? Hmm. What do you mean? Expect expect to be like a good a, Christmas gift? No, no, just like a good like a, <laughs> like for someone for somebody watching or listening to the show. What's a good gift that is not like like I don't know sneakers or like some shit that's like a obvious thing. Hmm. I got a great answer to this. So this is uh, this is Ranch Rider. <laughs> this is ranch Rider Spirit. Tyrese, we're full we're full sellouts now. By the way, I don't know if you're uh, watching or listening to the show. This is <laughs> this is the best hard seltzer I've ever had. I've been sipping on this the whole episode. Um, this is actually our uh, Jason, our video guy, did not actually include all the cool stuff on this. But there's a old man in the three backboard right there. Uh, that's one of our names. Tommy's name, my name on the can. Um, I would get someone. Maybe a four pack of ranch water as I would, what I would get someone. The other thing I was going to say though, in all seriousness, a gift card to a spa. To me, that is like the greatest gift. It's saying like, take a half day for yourself, go relax, get some self care. That's a great gift to me. Uh, JJ, uh, JJ just completely disregarded the expect to be a good gift because I think everybody would say it's a good gift. Um, mine would be an. Okay, hear me out on this. An extra phone charger, even if you didn't lose it wow, yet. Wow, that's a great stocking stuffer. Even if you didn't lose wow. it yet. Because me, I lose my chargers. I break my chargers 
then you got to go buy, go to the store. It's nice to just have one. And another one, I am a big fan of white Nike socks. Like, <laughs> like, right, like in the mid calf. Like, Terry's. So Clearly has and a budget on his kids. I, I, I tell, I tell, like twenty dollars and under presents. My girl was like, "What do you want from Chris?" I said, "Yo, I just need some. Just give me some more socks. You know, it's always nice to have a fresh pair." I said, "Nothing wrong you with that." You don't get socks from your team. You play in the NBA. Yeah, he's a buy your girlfriend. He's to buy you socks for the Christmas. No, I mean this, but I'm bad at coming up with my own gifts. But I just throw out things. <laughs> that I, I would appreciate some socks, and I would appreciate a phone charger. I have. Uh, I actually have one more question before we let Tyrese leave. Um, Tyrese, what are you doing about the the Kobe thing with with the shoes? What's your strategy right now? Because aren't they oh, didn't they stop making the Kobe's? Yeah, yeah. I am a eBay fiend. Okay. Uh, I have been since high school, so I'm on eBay all day, basically every day, looking up. You know what? Kobe eight is my favorite model. Okay. And I, if you see me, I'm I tend to be hooping in Kobe eights. Uh, I I have so many colors at this point. Um, and I try to, and I space out when I wear them, uh, because okay. if you wear them too much, they obviously get beat up, but if you don't right. wear them enough, then they'll start to crumble because they're older shoes. Uh, so eBay, eBay, StockX, go like, you gotta go to a secondary market and people are, and I've been told to hit up, uh, DeMar and cause, cause he has them and we wear the same size, but I feel weird doing that. Cause we not, he doesn't even know me like that. So I, I wasn't supposed to just find, get his number from somebody and be like, yo, let me get a pair of shoes. Like. You don't even know me. I feel like that's weird, but that that might be where I end up going eventually because the eBay and, and all these websites are getting slimmer and slimmer. We can connect you with Demar. That's not an issue. <laughs> well, not I, it's not. It's I can get his number. It's I know. Just, I know. It's just. Like, it's just you don't want to ask saying. another well, player. But you're asking for a lot, though. I mean, it's like yeah, the shoes the guy I'm have, saying. Yeah. Like I don't. I just think it's. I don't know. If not, Demar said to you, "I I got I got ten pairs for you, and I'm going to charge you market price." Would you buy them? Yeah. Okay. Because more than likely, he's got colors that nobody has. So I need them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. All right, man. We appreciate the time. Best of luck coming up. All right, man. And uh, always good to catch up. See you soon. Appreciate you guys. All right. See you in sack.